<clears throat> I pray everybody had a good Sabbath. <clears throat> I've been... <clears throat> Since I hadn't been feeling really good, I decided to spend the day with the Lord and go into some videos that other people have made, glean some something from them, you know. You know, I'm not the only one that has the Word of God. There's other people out there, other people that are having visions and having the Word of God gave to them in these last days that are very, very important to hear. So, I stumbled across one from Anita Frontes. Uh, I, I just love this woman, okay? She is a true woman of God, period. I've known a lot of men and women out there, but I know, I can feel that in my spirit that this woman is truly a woman of God, and she hears the Holy Spirit speaking to her and guiding her. So, um... She has a ministry. So, I pray if anybody feels led to donate to her ministry, do so. Do so. But I'm going to put one of her videos down below here because I think it just it's really, really, really important. The name of it will be What Has Happened Since the Blood Red Moon. Okay? <clears throat> Some of you might have already seen it. But I'm going to put it down below there since I go to Facebook and other places, you know. <clears throat> and, and she gives some details that's very important since the blood red moon on Passover. But people, we have another blood red moon. In fact, we have three blood red moons coming up. But we have another one this year. At the Feast of Tabernacles. So. I. I hope. I pray. That there's. Awakening coming. Amongst the bride. The body of Christ. Need awakening. To shake you. And wake you up. To the end days. To we are in the end days these are the last days you need to wake up people if you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach you need to give it to him and you need to start seeking him in a way that you've never sought him before you need to get this house clean because we're in the preparation days of his soon coming we have to be ready we have to be ready to stand. Also, there's much evil coming upon this land. Much is already come upon this man land, and much is happening. They are people dying for the name of Jesus Christ. They are dying because these radical Muslims, like Al-Qaeda and things, are going in, and they kill them. They kill them. If you do not convert and change from worshiping Jesus Christ into Islam, you're dead. You're dead. You know, they took two young men and, and crucified them. To, uh, just like Jesus was crucified. Crucified them because they would not turn. Uh, they chop up off heads. They, they beat them to death. They, they do all manners of evil. They take babies out of mother's womb. You want to talk about radical abortion? They literally cut the belly open and take that baby out, hanging on trees with the biblical cord wrapped around its neck. Evil, evil things are happening. And you don't think it won't come here to the United States? 
Oh yeah, it'll come here sooner or later. I think sooner than later, but it's coming. It's coming. Things are changing abruptly since that blood red moon that happened on Passover and another one coming in the fall during Feast of Tabernacles. Much is going to happen between this time and this time. You know that fine line that we're all walking is coming. It's coming people. And then after Feast of Tabernacles, that blood red moon, got another one coming on the Feast of Passover in 2015. But just before then, we have a solar eclipse, a darkening of the sun. Something more from the time of that blood red moon this fall and the blood red moon I pass over in 2015 and that clips the dark of the sun. It's coming. It's coming people. Whether you want to believe it or not. Things are moving very very fast. It's like it's speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. It is speeding up, people. Time. Motions of time. That space-time is accelerating as space is expanding and growing bigger and growing bigger out there and widening. And then you got the blackness out there in space dark matter and they that one scientist talk about dark matter grabbing a hold of some stuff and throwing comets and and um, asteroids at at the earth at the earth dark matter throwing it well do you know what dark matter is it's evil it's Satan's realm it really is they don't know what it is. Science don't really know what it is. They can't even grab a hold of it enough to examine it. I'm telling you, it is Satan's realm out there. Darkness. Evil, evil darkness. And who would want to hurl um, asteroids and all of that at the Earth anyway? Only one. Satan wants us destroyed. He wants us destroyed. You don't understand that. But he really wants us destroyed because he knows his end is very short. It's not very long until his end will end. Into a lake of fire where he will have the gate the door chained shut over him for at least a thousand years. You think he's wanting that to happen? No. You think he's going to fight right up to the bitter end? Yeah, you better believe it. You think that he will kill as many of us as he can? Yeah, he will. That's what's on his mind, is to kill us, destroy us. If not physically, spiritually. Anita says some very pointed things, you know. They've got the hate crime bill out, and if you, if you say much about gays or other, other things, you know, they can hold you as a hate with the hate crime. But it's okay for the gay people to hate us so bad that they would try to want to put our businesses out of, shut down our business, 
put us out of business, not caring that the people that may be working for us will lose their jobs too. It's all about their agenda of being accepted for what they are. You know what? I know what you are. I know. It doesn't matter whether I accept it or not. See, that's the thing you don't understand. It doesn't matter whether I accept it or not. God does not accept it. Go to Acts chapter 1. Read it. I'm not going to read it again. I've read it all to you once before. not going to do it again. You can read. You can read just as good as I can or better probably. Because I have dyslexia. So you probably can read it better than me. But go to chapter 1. Read the whole chapter. It talks about how God feels about you. You're an abomination to God. That's how it is. So it doesn't matter how I feel about you. You see, you understand? I, I, I don't judge you. I, I'm not here to judge you. I'm telling, I'm here to tell you about Jesus Christ. A, a, a son of God that come down in flesh and died on the cross for your sins. But for you to be forgiven, even though he died on the cross for you, you have to stop doing what you're doing. You have to repent. Say, God, I'm sorry that I've, I had this, this speakable lust in my heart for another person like me. I, I'm sorry. I, I repent. I, re, I, I will step away. I will, I will never have sex with another man, if you're a man, or another woman, if you're a woman. I will not do that no more. I will love you. I will obey you. I will quit sinning. And until you do that, you are an abomination to God. He, he has said so in the Bible. In the New Testament. It's no game. Can't you understand out there? It is no game. He created the world. He created everything in the world. He created humanity. And he has the rights to say to his creation... I do not like this. If you do this, it's abomination to me. He has the right to do that. He's God. He's God. And he can put stipulations there. He puts stipulations left and right. I mean, I'm married. And if I go out and have sex with another man, that's called adultery. And guess what? That's abomination to God too. Because I've defiled my marriage vows. See, we all have a fine line to walk, whether we like to or not. And your soul is eternal. And it either will it will drill in the pits of fire for your sins. Because you did not repent and take the precious gift that Jesus did for you on the cross. Or you will repent and come to him asking forgiveness and spend an eternal lifetime with God the Father and Jesus Christ in heaven. Your choice. Because that judgment... What you are doing is abominable to God. And I'm telling you, it's in the Bible. Read it and you will learn that it's abomination to God. So, what can I say? We are in the last days. More is to come. More is to come, people. And I can't stop you from sinning. If this is what you desire to do, 
what what can I say? You will pay the price for it eventually. And I think that's sad. Because see, it's not hate when I warn you. It's pure love. Because I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you be destroyed. When you face God, and God condemns you for what you did, and what you're still doing. And, and those out there that has rejected Jesus Christ and God and went into other religions like Buddha and like um, Muslim and uh, there's so many out there, my God, I can't name them all. You know what? It would have been better for you to have never known God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, the Son, in the first place, to have turned your back on Him and go into something else. I'd say so in the Scriptures, too. Because when you stand before God, you will have to count why you turn your back on, on the Son. The Son who paid a dear price for your soul and you turn your back on him very sad that's the same as abomination too we are in the last days Many of us will go to concentration camps and we will die for his holy name. We will. All over the world. It's already happening overseas. It'll come here to America eventually. Yeah, they don't want Bibles in schools, and they don't want prayer in schools like they did that little uh, that five-year-old, was it a five-year-old? What was it? Eight-year-old. Anyway, you'll hear it on Anita's video where they, the teacher had said that they could read anything, so the child took out a Bible and was reading it, and she jerked the Bible out of her hand and said, that's not acceptable in my classroom. Bibles are not acceptable in the classroom. One of the best history books that you can read talks a lot about not only Israel, other countries. So she said it couldn't be. Bibles one one day will be taken out of our own homes and burned in the street in a pile, just like they did in Hitler's time over in Germany when they burnt all the books. They were not acceptable, so therefore burn them, and they did. Burnt thousands and thousands of books. And there's one thing I do have to tell you, homosexuals, think about this, okay? When us Christians are gone, when you joyfully helped maybe get us in concentration camps thinking that, that um, Islam will be better to you than we were, uh, and you make sure that we get there so we can die for saying anything to you, uh, do you know what Islam does to homosexuals? I mean, you need to go study it, guys, women. Go study it. One thing, they don't like homosexuals. They think they're dirty. 
Heard that before. Hitler said the same thing when he was taking the homosexuals to the concentration camps with the Jews to die. As far as <clears throat> the Muslims, the radical ones, you will die with us Christians. Now, isn't that something unique? You guys died in the concentration camps with the Jews, and you wasn't even Jews. And when this all comes in the it, Islam takes over the world, and I think it's Antichrist, so there. Anyway, uh, as they take over the world and get rid of undesirable people, Christians first. Oh, well, no, Jews first, Christians second, but they'll grab you homosexuals too. And again, you get thrown into the camps with us, not because of your belief in Jesus Christ. Mm -mm. Not because you're a Jew. Mm -mm. It's because you are a homosexual. And they think it's dirty. Just like Hitler thought it was dirty. So you all get to go into the camps eventually. Maybe not at first. But you all will get to go into the camps with us and die. With us. You may think they won't hurt you. But they will come after you. They already killed the homosexuals overseas. Right along with the Christians. You guys and you women that are gay, you need to really see, do you really want Islam over here? Do you want Sharia law over here? I'm just saying, do you really want it? Because <sighs> Sharia law is very strict and it's stern. That's why it's so bad for women. Because we're nothing. We're nothing. And we better totally obey or else we will be stoned to death or beaten or our heads chopped off in the streets in public. But if you're gay and your homosexual lifestyle gets noticed, they will do you just like they probably will do me for running my mouth. Because I stand for Jesus Christ who died on the cross and arose the third day for me. I stand no matter what. I believe in God, Yahweh, the one and only true God because Allah is not the one and only true God. He's just another so-called God out there floating around. Like all the Hindu gods and all of them, you know, out there, you know. Uh, there's only one, one true God. His name is Yahweh. He has a son named Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you and me and arose the third day. He's my ark. You know, Noah had to build a wooden ark in the days of the flood. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is my ark, my covering. His holy blood that he spilt for me covers me. He's my ark during the time when the great tribulation start and when the judgment far sweeps around this world that the Bible speaks of. So, I pray, I pray that the people that listen to this Really take it to heart. Not get mad because I say something because maybe you're gay. Or maybe you believe in Buddha. Or maybe you're Muslim. Don't get all upset. Go to the Bible and begin to study. Really. And ask for wisdom. 
to understand before it's too late for you? I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. Do you? Do you know? Have a blessed weekend, people. Be blessed. And please look at the video that I'm going to put below. This is very, very, very important. Thank you. Be blessed. And yes, please give to her ministry. Please. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.